show students how to use the Jupyter Notebooks on Mac OS. So to begin, every time you want to uh, use the Jupyter Notebooks, you need to open up a terminal. So again, command space, type terminal. Uh, you'll get one of these things here. Um, in the terminal, uh, you need to type in the following command. Uh, so conda activate beaker x. So that will activate the anaconda environment uh, containing your beaker x installation. You should see that in front of your prompt. Uh, you then can type in Jupyter Notebook and press enter. And um, a notebook browser, uh, a Jupyter file browser should appear in your web browser. Um, if you've placed your file somewhere in your home directory, uh, everything that I've shown you should be fine. If your uh, notebook files are somewhere unusual, um, that is not in your home directory, uh, you'll have a problem. So there's no way to go up a directory inside the Jupyter Notebook browser. So right now I can see everything in my home directory and below but I can't see anything above it. So if you, for some reason, put the notebook files above your home directory, uh, this isn't going to work. You have to start the Jupyter Notebook. So you have to, in the terminal, you have to be in a directory that can reach um, your notebook files. Uh, if you've been following the instructions and doing everything that I've been doing, everything should be fine. You wanna to browse to your uh, notebook files. Now the notebook files are available here on the on queue. So under content, uh, you'll find um, a topic called notebook files. If you click on that, you will see that there's a zip file that you can download. So download and save that zip file. So don't open it, right? So download, save, right? Uh, I've already done this, so I'm not gonna do it again. Um, in Finder, in my download uh, folder, you can see there's a zip file. I've already copied the zip file into my course directory. So under documents 6124, I've already copied the zip file into that folder. And then you're going to extract the contents of that folder. So right click, open with archive utility. When you do that, you'll end up with a notes folder. And in the notes folder, you'll see there's a bunch of uh, folders and files. And these are the uh, notebook files. So the notebook files are organized into four parts but that's the file that you're interested in. So TOC is short for table of contents. Um, the IPYNB is the Jupyter Notebook extension. Um, so back in Jupyter, you want to uh, go to that, uh, uh, go to your notes folder and find the table of contents um, file and click on it. Um, and uh, it'll open up what looks like to be a web page. And that's all uh, that, that Jupyter Notebooks are. They're basically souped up web pages. Um, and you can see all the notebooks for the course. All right, so let's open up the first notebook. So this is just uh, showing you how to write Hello World. Um, and it starts by uh, reviewing um, Python, right? So in Python, your Hello World, pro Hello World program looks like this. Um, Actually, let me just back up a step here. You'll notice that in Jupyter, um, you'll see uh, that there's this block of text that's highlighted with a blue bar. So that's called a cell. So cells can contain text, right? Here's another cell, right? More text, another cell, right? But cells can also be code cells uh, that contain runnable code fragments. So here's a Python code cell um, inside of a Java Jupyter notebook. Uh, now, up until about May, um, this used to work. Well, as, as late as May, for sure, this used to work. Uh, only recently did I discover that this no longer works. So if you install um, uh, Anaconda and, uh, Beaker X, and the BeakerX kernels with the instructions I provided, uh, this doesn't work anymore. If you're, so you can't run, uh, if you try to run a Python code fragment inside of a Java uh, notebook, it doesn't work anymore. Uh, and this sort of thing happens um, when uh, software that Jupyter and BeakerX depend on changes, uh, because this is all open source software, right? Things change. Um, something's been updated that has caused this to break, and I don't know what it is, and I can't easily fix it. 
So unfortunately, your your uh, Python code um, cells don't run properly. Right, you end up with an exception. Uh, the Java code uh, cells do work though. So if you click on this and run it, you'll get this little message here. That simply tells you that um, the Java compiler has compiled this program successfully. I can run the main method uh, by clicking on this cell and running it, and you'll see the string hello, uh, goodbye world gets printed out. This is actually supposed to be hello world. I've changed this. So um, the Jupyter notebooks, uh, all of the content of them uh, is editable by you. So if you've downloaded uh, the notebooks, they're yours. They're just files and you can edit them uh, to your heart's content. So for example, in this code cell, uh, I can change that string goodbye back to hello. That's what it should be. Um, I've modified this notebook since um, I I've downloaded it. Uh, and then you can rerun it. And I can run the main method again, and now it changes, right? So the Jupyter notebooks are interactive uh, and they're meant to be used interactively, right? So the intent is that you go in, uh, run the code cells and modify the code cells um, to experiment with how the code works. Um, the nice thing about uh, the Jupyter Notebook is you don't need a complete program uh, to run some Java code. So that is a complete Java program. It has a class, it has a main method, um, and so that constitutes a complete uh, Java program. Uh, what the, uh, the Jupyter Notebooks let you do is that you can put in Java code fragments, so incomplete programs, and run them which is really nice because you can't do that in Eclipse um, or any other um, Java uh, environment. Uh, you can do that in um, if you use what's called the Java REPL. So the um, uh, in Java nine they introduced a um, they introduced a way that you could run little fragments of code. Um, but the notebooks um, it's nice because you can have the code fragments and some explanatory text around it all in one place. Uh, so let's go to a different notebook, and I can show you an example of that. Uh, so I'm just going to arbitrarily open up the arithmetic notebook. Um, and in the arithmetic notebook, uh, this is basically how you how you do simple arithmetic in Java. Um, you can see that uh, the notebooks can also render um, uh, mathematical equations nicely. So if you know LaTeX, um, you can write LaTeX math equations uh, inside a Jupyter notebook. Okay. Uh, so I just want to go to a code, a short code cell fragment, right? So here's one, for example. Uh, and I've modified this one already once. So let me change it back to the original. Okay, so this is three lines of Java. It's not a complete Java program. If you tried to type this into Eclipse and compile it, uh, the compiler would complain. Uh, but in Jupyter, I can just run that. And it will output 360 degrees, wraps around to one degree. So this is basically... Um, using Java's remainder operator to show students how to um, wrap a integer value uh, to, with, to a finite range. So here I'm wrapping values to within the range um, minus 360, sorry, minus 360 to 360 degrees, right? So this is uh, basically going around a circle. So if I go around a circle once plus one degree, well, that's the same as going around, uh, that's the same as moving one degree. If I move, say, 45 degrees, well, that's the same as moving 45 degrees. If I go 720 degrees, right, that's like going around the circle twice, and that should take me back to zero degrees, right? And so that shows you how you can uh, quickly um, interact with a, uh, with a Jupyter code cell, modify the cell, run it immediately, and see the results, right? It's a really powerful way to learn uh, programming. So the intent of these notebooks is that you interact with them, right? Uh, you shouldn't just passively read them. You know, maybe just run the code cell fragment and see what it does. Um, you should, uh, where possible, um, run the cell, run the code frag, uh, sorry, run the code cell, modify the code cell to see what changing it will do, right? Many of the notebooks will even have suggestions on how to change the code cells. In all the notebooks, you'll find exercises. Right. Uh, some of the exercises have code cells after them so that you can enter in your uh, answer and uh, run them to see if you get the correct answer. Um, the exercises aren't are sometimes in the middle 
of a notebook sometimes are at the end, right? It just depends on where I thought the best place to put the uh, code cell would be. Okay, so again, I've edited this um, this uh, notebook already once before. So the nice thing about the notebooks is you can edit anything in them, right? So for example, exercise 14, it's asking you to find a value of x such that x minus x is not zero, right? If you read the notebook, the answer is very obvious. Um, but you know, if you are having difficulty, you might wanna uh, put a note to yourself here. So I can insert a new cell, right? And I wanna put some text here. Uh, so for the text, you wanna use Markdown. Markdown is just a very simple markup language. Uh, it's much simpler than HTML. Um, all of these notebooks are written in Markdown. Um, you don't need to learn Markdown to use it. it. You can just type in plain text, right? So here, uh, if I'm stuck on this question, I might wanna ask um, either the instructor or a TA about it during office hours. So I can put a note in here. I might say, hey, I should ask uh, the prof about this uh, during office hours. And I can run that. And I now have a permanent note added to my notebook. Right, uh, and so you can do this um, anywhere, right? You can modify code cells, you can insert cells. Um, I guess I can just solve this exercise now. Uh, so in Java, the answer to this uh, would be, there's more than one answer. Uh, here, for example, I could do um, double Z equals uh, double Okay, so double dot nan uh, is uh, the uh, is Java for um, not a number represented as a double value, right? So not a number is the value that's reserved for um, non-computable values. So things like zero divided by zero. Uh, it turns out if you do arithmetic with nan, uh, usually the answer is nan. So uh, if I print out the answer and run, uh, you'll see that in fact, the, the value of Z is nan, it's not zero, right? Um, right, and so there's an example of editing a code cell. Uh, now, um, the answers for all of the exercises are given to you. So if you go to the table of contents, right? After every part, there's a notebook called exercise solutions where you will find the solutions to almost every exercise. Right? There's a few exercises that are too long or they're creative exercises or something like that. Right? And um, many of the exercises are actual runnable, sorry, many of the exercise solutions are actual runnable blocks of code. Right? You can go in, run the block of code, see if you in fact get the right answer. You can go in and change it, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So you have the solutions uh, every, for every section. Right? Uh, there, there, and there. Um, and so that's a quick introduction on how to use your Jupyter Notebooks in this course. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Now, uh, if you uh, don't want to go through the trouble of installing uh, Anaconda and uh, the Beaker X kernels and downloading the notebooks onto your computer, you can do all this online. So if you click that link there, uh, that will take you to, sorry, a hosting, oh wait, sorry. Um, I need to open that in a new window or new full, uh, sorry, new tab. So these are the notebooks running on a server somewhere in the world. That's kind enough to host them for free. Um, so uh, what's happening now is that someone's server is now starting up um, a Jupyter environment uh, that can actually run these notebooks. Um, if lots of people are using the notebooks at the same time, this doesn't take very long. Um, if people haven't used the notebooks online in some time, then what the server has to do is it actually has to install uh, Jupyter and um, the Beaker X kernels, right? So that can take, you know, if you've done it already, you can see that it takes like some, some like, sometimes it can take up to 10 minutes. Uh, and so here, uh, the server started up in not too much time. And that's because I've been um, I've been accessing it online um, uh, fairly frequently. Okay, uh, so these are the online versions of the notes. You don't have to install anything, right? 
in the online version, uh, the Python stuff actually works. So if you run that, it'll actually print hello world uh, eventually. It, it always takes a little while to start up a, um, if you're running um, a Python cell inside of a Java notebook, it takes a while to, rest to start a Python kernel uh, to run this Python code. Um, the first time you do it anyway. Um, and so uh, if you want to see what the Python uh, programs are doing inside the notebooks, you can always look online. Uh, also, if you modify your own version of the notebook and um, you accidentally delete stuff um, and you want to get back the original, well, you can just go back to the original notebook and uh, copy the contents of the cells back into your notebook. Now, if you're using the online notebooks exclusively, uh, you can make changes to the notebook. So for example, I can change this to goodbye world, right? I can run it, uh, run the main method, right? And it will in fact print out uh, goodbye world. Again, it's, again, it's just starting up the uh, Java kernel. Uh, to run this. Um, but anyway, what happens is uh, you can make the change, uh, but when you close the notebook and come back in later, the changes are gone, right? Uh, because uh, the way the uh, the way the hosting service works is every time someone accesses notebook, it pulls it from my uh, GitHub repository. Mm, I'm not sure what's causing this uh, so much grief. Uh, normally it runs fine. Okay, I'm just going to try another notebook just to make sure things are working okay. So, oh, there we go. Okay. Um, right, so um, if you want to, you can use the online version of the notebooks. Um, they, like I said, you'll lose any changes that you make to them. Uh, the other problem is if you go away, so if you won't have lunch or something like that, uh, the because this is running on someone else's server, uh, the notebook will shut down uh, because um, you know whoever's running this for free for us uh, doesn't have an infinite amount of resources to run all the, to keep all these notebooks running. So I don't know what the exact timeout is. It's probably something like five or 10 minutes. If you don't do anything to a notebook in that amount of time, the notebook will shut down. Uh, you can't always restart it properly. So up here, there'll be a little button that says, try to restart the kernel. It doesn't always work. In those situations, you have to come back to the original. You have to restart the original. Um, you have to come back to here again. Uh, and reload uh, the table of contents uh, to start up a new server um, for your session again. So that's the other inconvenient thing. If you have to go away very frequently, um, as opposed to uh, sitting down for um, a dedicated period of time, uh, the notebooks will close down on you online. All right, so that's everything I want to say about uh, using the notebooks on a Mac.